how central banks can credibly commit not to deviate from their own announced policy. So in the last two recordings, we've been talking about this thing a lot. So central banks, they, uh, they announce the policy, but then they deviate. They deviate thinking that this is going to be better for the economy. But ultimately what happens is that uh, we found this, that it was better to have the rule than the discretion. It was better to have uh, no deviation from the announced policy because when central banks have deviated from the announced policy, it has resulted in less than optimal outcome. This is what we have done in the last two recordings. You can watch that. But then the question arises that what can central bank actually do uh, not to deviate from its announced policy? Uh, not to deviate from its announced policy. One of the things which it can do is that uh, we can sort of da, 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 central bank can be ripped off its policy making power. So central bank, uh, so in case if uh, we say that the money supply growth is going to be 0%, that's a rule and you cannot deviate from it. So when central bank has no discretion at all, then there won't be any problem. So people will also expect that this is going to be the case and they will also behave accordingly. Uh, so central bank. Give up. It's policy making, right? So, for example, the mandate of the central bank can be defined by law in terms of that uh, the money supply growth is going to be zero percent, right? Uh, so then if you are having uh, such a law, then this is going to uh, take care of the problem of time inconsistency also, right? Uh, so because you do not want uh, central bank to pursue a very high money supply growth. You remember we did uh, in the last recordings also that uh, central bank has done the expansionary monetary policy. When central bank has done expansionary monetary policy, output has increased. When output has decreased, sorry, has increased, employment has increased. Employment has increased, unemployment has fallen. So central bank wants to do even better than the natural rate of unemployment. Central bank wants to reduce the unemployment even below than the natural rate of unemployment. And then we found that it has led to even higher inflation. We do not want such a condition. So you are, you are, tightening the uh, grip on the central bank by ripping off its policy making power. So what you are trying to say is that this is the law. Money supply growth is going to be 0%. You cannot expand. But just think about it. If you make such a law, this is also going to create a problem. Sometimes what can happen is that the unemployment can be above the natural rate of unemployment. Then central bank has to take up the actions to reduce the unemployment, then central bank will have to take up the uh, expansion monetary policy. But you have said that you cannot increase the money supply growth. So whenever law comes, you have to think in, in a larger perspective. So you are trying to solve one problem. It should not happen that it is creating the another problem at the same time. So there can be the case like this. So there is a law. which says that uh, uh, there is going to be um, setting money growth. At 0% forever. When you're going to set the money growth at 0% forever, then what is going to happen? Well, yeah, there are two things which can happen.
there are two things which can happen so if unemployment is already at the natural level of unemployment you want to curb the incentive of the central banker to pursue even better than that you you are trying to say fine fine don't unnecessarily increase the money supply because this is going to increase the output this is going to increase the employment this is going to reduce the unemployment we don't want that because we also knows that when unemployment is going to be reduced inflation is going to be higher right so in that case this rule is good but this rule can be bad also if you are not allowing the central bank to expand the money supply and the unemployment is above the natural rate of unemployment then this rule is going to be bad right so when central bank tries to put unemployment below the natural rate of unemployment here when central bank when central bank faces the situation where unemployment is already above the natural level of unemployment when the unemployment is already above the natural level of unemployment now what happens bhaiya yeah, in this case it is good fine this is good why again repeating this make this thing absolutely clear in your head you are already at the natural level of unemployment central bank wants to go even further and try to do better how by reducing unemployment even below the natural level of unemployment what we have seen in the earlier recordings it is not going to do anything economy will be back at the natural level of unemployment but at the higher prices that is the inflation is going to be higher so in such a case such a rule is good such a rule will prevent central bank pursue i money right but they can also be the case when the central bank is facing the situation when the unemployment is already above the natural level of unemployment then what do you want you want to you want to Uh, uh allow central bank to just see unemployment going above the natural level of unemployment you do not want central bank to do something uh, to increase the money supply so that output could be increased so that employment could be increased so that unemployment could fall so in such a case this rule is bad right uh, this rule is bad uh, so so uh, uh, so here hmm. or i mean i can also write one more thing where unemployment is already above the uh, this thing or unemployment is already far below you and then do you do don't you think when unemployment is already far below the un, uh, the natural level of unemployment you would want economy to move towards the unemployment a uh, natural level of unemployment right you would want to contract the money supply in that case uh, well you should be allowing central bank to follow its own policy in that case uh, uh, so here central bank could be allowed
to take actions. When I say actions, I mean expand the money supply or contract the money supply, right? Uh, so such actions become impossible. under a constant under a constant money go through right so this is this is one way to deal with the time inconsistency that you are uh, setting the money growth at 0% forever but there are other ways also to deal with time inconsistency. Other ways to deal with time inconsistency. What are the other ways? Hmm? What are the other ways? <clears throat> One, you have to make central banks independent. Hmm. Hmm. Central bank. Should be given more independence. Central bank should be given more independence. So if you look at politicians, I mean, politicians, uh, they are coming for a certain term uh, for five years, for four years. So their idea would be they want to show that they have done a lot for the economy. Just see, econ uh, they have been able to reduce the unemployment. So they might force the central bankers to pursue a policy which is going to reduce the unemployment even below the natural rate, right? Uh, so in case, and, and they also know this, that if they are going to force the central bankers to reduce the unemployment even below the natural rate, this is going to push the inflation further. If central bank is independent of, is, a, is an independent authority, it is not going to come under the pressure of politicians, then it, uh, central bankers, they are uh, not obliged that they will have to uh, follow uh, the follow the rules of the politicians or follow the uh, the orders of the politician, right? Uh, so they can resist the political pressure in that case. Uh, the other thing could be, okay, forget about politicians. Suppose I am the central banker. I would also want to show that just see in my tenure, we have been able to reduce the unemployment. So let's say if I am going to be in the office only for one year or two years, then I would want to show that my tenure was the best. So the in but in case if I am going to have a longer term view, I am not only going to think about my short term or my short tenure, but I am going to have a longer term view then it is possible that I would not see what is good for the economy only in the short term, but I would try to see what is good for the economy in the medium term and in the long term, right? Uh, so the other thing is that these central bankers, they should be given longer terms in the office, right? Central bankers. be given
longer terms in office, right? So, and then they also say this, that one of the thing which what you can do is that you can have a conservative central bank. So conservative central banker is the one who is going to dislike inflation a lot. So even if it comes in uh, at the expense of the higher unemployment, it will say fine. I mean, but I dislike inflation a lot, right? Uh, so, so, so the third one is, so I don't have space out here. I'm just writing it here that <clears throat> governments should appoint a conservative central bank a conservative central bank who is disliking inflation right and so uh, that person is willing to accept less inflation for more unemployment so they are trying to say this uh, so these are the ways where uh, the time inconsistency problem could be solved and central banks uh, central banks they can credibly commit not to deviate from its announced policy right so this is the this is what it is right so this is what I want to do in this recording. Thank you, Vita.